Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Today we're here back with Catacorus. Tonight we got the stupid world of portable Crash Bandicoot games. So yeah, pretty much Crash Bandicoot games. You can probably like cots like these or probably your mono phone. Like, you know a few of them, but and again, some reports and there was Crash on the run for a while. <laughs> Not sure what happened to that, so I don't know, fall off the bandwagon for that one. <laughs> Anywho. How about we hop in and get this portable Crash Bandicoot adventure underway? So be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. Oh! Oh, God! You all right? You all right, man? Uh-oh, messy. Whoops. What's this? Oh. Right. Just open the coin, you know? <gasps> oh, <gasps> dude! I've been invited oh. to the creamery! Uh, I love right. cream! Oh boy, oh boy! Yeah, oh, what am I gonna wear? Uh, Who will I take boy. with me? Oh, I can't wait to go! I'm so excited! Oh, yeah, that I read sounds that wrong. right. <laughs> well, at least Oopsie. they let me take Dad home in my cream tasting pot. Odd. Wolf. He died how he lived. Uh, Smelling of cream. Oh. <laughs> Did he got in a cream bed or something? What a depressing day. Nothing uh, can make me feel any better. Wanna, that's Reddit. Hang on, it's June! Right, bitches, Bandicoot is back! Portable games. Okay, games that are portable. It feels so good to play a game that you're able to take absolutely anywhere with you. No, uh, no, no. Not the thing. games themselves. Dummy. Stupid. I mean games that you're actually able to play away from the house. And that's what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. Even though it does feel good to carry your Glock 17 right next to a copy of the official uh, UK PlayStation medieval? Magazine Demo Disc Issue 38. And it's especially fun when your favourite huh. franchises get the portable treatment. I mean, don't yeah, get me wrong, I love PC it. and console <laughs> gaming as much as that guy. But sometimes yeah, when you play a game, you don't want the commitment involved in sitting down, starting the game up and staying in the living room. Sometimes you just want to sit down, start the game up and stay in the living room. And Crash Same Bandicoot, thing. the untouchable and almighty Cash Banuka, is no stranger to the portable <laughs> console treatment. Dating all the way back to the classic Game Boy Advance, even until today huh. with the really damn good Nintendo Switch ports of the Insane Trilogy and Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Oh. Oops. I specifically remember playing Crash Bandicoot <laughs> XS and Entranced for the GBA for dozens of hours when I was a kid during long car trips. Only during the daytime though, because, you know, yeah. you couldn't you see it. See and it. after recently giving the new Crash Bandicoot 4 Switch port a try and being surprised with how good it was, it made me want to take a look back through the entirety of Crash's handheld catalogue to see if any of it was worth going back to. Hang on a second, did I just say that Crash has had the portable treatment dating all the way back to the Game Boy Advance? Mm -hmm. Silly me, smack in the head, poke in the eye, Ow. cut my tongue off. For most people, Please the don't. Game Boy Advance Crash games are where you would assume he got his handheld debut, and I wouldn't blame you for that. Oh. Hmm? But that's not true. Oh. Crash didn't start off on handhelds in 2002. He started all the way back in 1998. Hmm. Not with the Game Boy. Not with the Game Gear. Not with the Atari Lynx. The first handheld Crash game ever made was from Tiger Electronics. Crash and Tiger Web by Forks, banded gameplay. What words God. immediately come to mind when you hear the word Tiger? Pride, strength, speed, power, grace. Mm -hmm. Well, take all of those words away and you're left with Tiger Electronics, a company that should be known for creating the Furby and lots of other toys, but instead is now infamous for their hundreds of trash portable gaming systems from the 90s, where every single gaming franchise you can imagine was stripped of all dignity, shat on top of a cheap piece of plastic, and then sold at low prices as single individual games that were perfect for little Timmy's birthday. Or just party favors. Sonic the Hedgehog, Battletoads, Castlevania, The Addams Family. Every game you can think of from the 90s ended up on watch, these things but, uh, like a fungus. And Crossbandicoot was unfortunately no exception. Do you remember my Pixar games video from last year when we took yeah. a look at the 
Oh, the Zizzle. Zizzle. Well, that is basically exactly what Tiger games were. LCD screens with a handful of printed images on them that light up at different times to simulate movement when you press a button. 6400 die high res screen and digitized sounds. Oh my god. Well, if it has digitized sounds, then I'd better per purchase one on my credit credit card from my bank bank account. You kids think that the original Super Mario Brothers looks primitive? Bitch, these kinds of things were coming out 10 years after that game. I'm telling yeah. you, you've got it lucky There's nowadays with your out there looks switches to make a cheap bug. and your iPhones and your VTech. Now, there are actually a few Crash Bandicoot oh, LCD games floating around VR. out there, including two mini arcade cabinet styled huh. ones made Manly by Toy <laughs> Quest? Really? Manly Toy Quest. What manly toys are you questing for, Crash? And there's even this one from Tiger Electronics themselves, where you need to do what Crash does best. Locate the treasure of the mysterious Mr. Krull. My are favorite sure Crash cool? character next to... <laughs> Dr. Naughty. However, for love nor okay. money, I couldn't find any of these online. Except one. Really? Huh? The first Crash one that Tiger made. The first Crash really? Bandicoot handheld game ever, in fact. Hmm? And here it is. Uh, are you sure that's not a flip phone? Digitized sounds. Now I know what you're thinking. Daddy Caddy, that that's game. not a game. That's a clam. But you're wrong. Look, just open it up like a walkie-talkie and you have a video game. It's magic. We turn it on, the game boots up and... Oh. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm confused. How is an LCD screen <laughs> Tiger Electronics game giving me the Jeez, choice to awful. start a new game and load a saved game? Surely that's too <sighs> advanced. And what about the game itself? It's actually, miraculously enough, a 3D platformer that you can freely control. What wet really? and soggy dimension did I slip into here? Okay, so believe it or I not, there's know. actually a reason for this. This here, <laughs> is not your standard Tiger Electronics game. It's actually oh. a special edition version of a Tiger handheld known as a 99X. Hence, this Nine game Nine is X commonly games? referred to online okay. as Crash Bandicoot 99X. Simply put, they were more advanced <laughs> than their cheap pound oh. shop counterparts, Paris, but not by much. I mean, effects. the graphics actually move, so that's a star, and they do have all of those digitized <laughs> sounds that they promised me. But just look at it. You're still playing with a pager that moves at like three pictures per second. And instead of a phone call waiting for you at the end of it, you have a star-shaped cookie cutter with trousers that runs as smoothly yeah, as a lampshade yeah. made from human skin. I also don't know if you happen to Thanks notice that the Texas only one I managed to find buy. online doesn't even work properly and most of the graphics just aren't there. Have you ever seen a system oh, where Lord. the older it gets, the more lines of graphics go missing? Yeah, that's not good. Oh, that's like, nice. The spiders scream dead. like you set fire to a puppy. I don't know, guys. This is completely unplayable. You're better off playing oh, with a kidding. meringue. This is just my opinion, though. What does the advert for this thing say? Into a Crash Bandicoot game you've never played. <laughs> hey, you're right. Oh, my oh, God. You can get two of them together and mount them for multiplayer. I've always <laughs> wondered how oysters mate. And you know what? I'm Ow. glad I couldn't find the rest of these things online because do you know how much this single one costed me? Yes, oh, this broken wow. snot green calculator set me back 184 pounds and 36 p. That's 250 dollars. This is a rare Why? collector's item. And gee, was it worth it? Now I know we've only yeah, just started, back the ocean. but it's already clear to me that I'm going to need some financial backing to help fund my addiction to LCD screen computer games. But how will I ever afford to keep buying this rubbish? <laughs> Hello, I'm Sponce! Oh Christ. oh Christ! And I'm here to tell you all about the amazing company Omaze, who I've been working with very closely recently to give there you is, all at home the chance to win $20,000 in cash to build your very own dream PC. Or you can buy like... 80 Tiger Electronic Crash Bandicoot games. Hmm. Imagine the multiplayer! All you need to do is go to okay. omaze.com forward slash Kadikarus and enter for your chance to win. You can also donate $10 yeah, along with your entry, wheels. which will all go towards supporting the charity School on Wheels. Charity? Uh, yeah. 
You might want to Suddenly get this response, all feels very Dad. inappropriate. Yes, it is. There because School on Wheels is a genuinely brilliant charity that provides education and support to parents and children experiencing homelessness all across Southern California. And telling you all of that dressed up as a kite didn't feel right. As a step parent to three kids, this is a charity that I am 200% behind. And as soon as Omaze reached out to me with this opportunity to support them, I literally couldn't say no. I mean, I am lucky enough to have never been in this kind of situation, but there are thousands out there every day that are struggling. And so far, School on Wheels has helped out over 50,000 people to this day. And do I need to remind you that your $10 donation enters you into this sweepstakes for a chance to win $20,000 for the PC build of your dream? Gaming, video editing, 3D modeling, even chairs and headsets, it doesn't matter. Go nuts. And don't worry, nothing will go wrong. That only seems to happen to me. Plus, you can also Ooh, grab yourself oh, an yeah, extra 150 problems. entries by using the code RADNESS150 Radness. when you enter. Radness. So again, that's omaze.com forward slash Cadicorus. The code is radness150. Donate to support a great cause and good luck with your chance of winning $20,000 worth of really good PC goodies. So anyway, what's next? Let's go. What? Uh oh. There's more LCD screen crash games? Again? That were free toys from McDonald's? <laughs> oh boy. What was with the LCD craze back in the day? Yeah, I don't remember those one day. Oh. Goodbye. Nope, these numbered spines oh don't belong to a collection of cash banuka encyclopedias. They actually belong to a series of even more LCD screen crash games. This time though, hmm. they were released in 2005 oh. for free from McDonald's Happy Meals. Except I had to buy them on eBay. So they weren't free, Oof. and I'm not happy about that. They are exactly what you'd expect for a free yeah. toy that came with a cardboard box with four chicken nuggets in it. They mostly only require two buttons to work, nothing moves, they all take place on a single printed picture, and the noise. Oh man, the noise. Yes, essentially, I spent money on a load of free toys that most kids threw in the bin, and all I have to show for it is a herd of geese. <laughs> Nails on a chalkboard is a compliment to these things. They don't make sounds, they honk. The visuals I mean, suck, geese? the gameplay sucks, yeah, and the cover art. I mean... Oh, Tesco? I mean... Uh, 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 bandicoot! Bandicoot! And I know, I know, I'm missing quite a lot of the yeah. numbers from this Where's collection, two, but there five, is a reason for two, that. Four, it's because six, all of the other even numbers belong to oh. Spyro LCD games that released at exactly the same time. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're not touching him for a while even though he'd Crazy. be all nice and leathery. There were also some other Crash Bandicoot McDonald's mm. toys exclusive to mm. other regions, so I couldn't get my hands on them. <gasps> I found Osama! Okay, that so now the stupid stuff is out of the way, one. let's dig into all the portable Crash games that most of you are probably familiar with. The Game Boy the Advance GBA. games. And to say that I'm familiar with these is a huge understatement. As a kid, I adored the first two hey, games. And even though I only recently tried games. out Crash <laughs> Nitro Kart on the GBA, I can confidently say I would have loved that as a kid too. I mean, think about it. These were the first proper Crash oh, games that were actually that. portable like and made into portable awful, systems. So you can imagine how exciting that was for a seven-year-old Crash fan. Crash. Yes, kids, you can now play your favorite game series anywhere. In the car. In the park. In the bath. <laughs> and on the toilet. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry, I got confused. This isn't a toilet, that's a toilet. <laughs> okay, good call. Cover the chunk. Oh, oops. Oops. The first one came You're out in 2002 one, and was called Crash Bandicoot The Huge Adventure, also known as Crash Bandicoot XS in Europe. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot Xylophone Saxophone. And it accomplished everything it needed to do at the time by keeping things simple. And by making sure to include Trump alarm of the Earth! It took the 2D sections uh, from the PS1 classics, please. crushed them down to fit into 16-bit style graphics, and just made a whole game out of it. Whoa, nice graphic! But maybe they made things a little too simple, because the story here bleh. Not only does it just take still hey, images from Crash 3's cutscenes and not even make the dialogue entertaining so you can hear Cortex go uh -huh. and see him blame everything on the Bandicoot. But somehow he even manages to shrink the entire planet down to the size of a beef tomato and does nothing but hold it there until Crash can stop him at the very end of the game. Cortex, mate. Squish. <laughs> Literally. Hit him. <laughs> well. 
Crash Bandicoot's out of date. And that's not all. The controls for basic running, jumping, and spinning may be great and feel really tight, but as soon as sliding and slide jumping gets involved, all of a sudden the jumps become extremely unresponsive and you will slip, slide, and slop off the end of most platforms when trying to use it. Then there's the occasional leaps of faith, the dreadful tiny tiger boss fight, the terrible final cortex boss, and the level that's called Snow Job, so the game ain't perfect. Oof. But damn it, for yeah, a 2002 really. GBA game Ooh. and a Crash game in general, it's a really good time, especially when it comes to the impressive chase sequences and the flying stages, which I will say right now are some of the best in any Crash game. It even manages to bring back the unlockable boss power-ups from Crash 3 and forces you to use them far more than Crash 3 ever did. There's the box gems to collect, the time trial relics, the belly flopping, and even a secret unlockable final boss. My nan. Basically, it's okay, everything you'd want from a portable crash game. Together? Uh -huh. Not like this $250 two-in-one hairbrush and mirror set. But was one yeah, good so crash game enough of Vicarious Visions? Or no, because they made a sequel. Double up. And it had that guy in it. Here comes my oh, hey, son. Do, 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 do. Here comes, Here comes my, my son. son. And I say he's an egg. Crash Bandicoot 2 Entrance, the sequel nobody asked for, but by God, they were getting Die. it anyway. Yeah. And if there were ever a perfect living, breathing example of the Ooh. adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, this game this is it? that. What? I didn't say living and breathing. What are you talking about? <gasps> <Oof>. <gasps> The story here is that Entropy is very cross with Crash Bandicoot, and he's so cross that he lays an egg. And the game itself is more or less exactly the same as Xylophone Saxophone, except with new locations that are much brighter and prettier than the first game, and feature new themes and colours for copied environments. There's new one-off level gimmicks that work really well, like the surprisingly tense shark wakeboard chases, and the surprisingly good 3D ball rolling segments Ooh. that control really well despite being on a D-pad. And in general, the bosses are much better in quality too, not to mention they're pretty unique unique since instead of rehashing crash villain boss fights, they're mostly possessed versions of your friends. And there's even a boss against fake crash that's more of a puzzle as you trick him into oddly timed traps without you getting hit yourself. By the way, on Crunch's fight, all you need to do is stay down and spam the fire button. You'll never get hit and never need to move. What a bread bin. But why are you fighting your friends and simpleton clones of yourself? <laughs> well, that's because of my aforementioned son, the brand new oh, crash villain see? Entrance, an angry egg that was created by by Entropy and is a gifted hypnotist. I particularly remember oh. being stuck for ages on his final boss fight when I was eight years old when this game first came out. It's a good fight, and it's even two phases, jumping from a Donkey Kong Country-esque fight at the very start to a bullet hell pinball fight in Da Air. Yeah. Going back though, it's not particularly hard or anything, it's just him. He upsets me. I think I was more intimidated well, kid, by his yeah. design when I was a kid and it caused me to make a ton of mistakes. I mean, look at his size here. Now, I love a good stomp, but I don't want to be stomped on yeah, by no, that. I'm and good. this face, this shitting Ooh. face. Let's play a game. What kind of eye infection does he have? Conjunctivitis? Cellulitis? Uveitis? Seeing a, seeing a doctor? I knew there was something wrong with my last checkup. You know what? I also don't like half of the power-ups here either. The crash dashes back for all the relic time trials, and yes, Crash still looks like a mangled child having a fit whenever he uses it. And the death tornado spin is back, plus you even have the double jump from the very start of the game. But the other two power-ups... Suck. First off is a super slide, which Ooh. looks cool, but mostly just fires you right into your death like... Ah! And after that is the rocket jump, which looks cool, but mostly just fires you right into your death like... Ah! What I'm getting at is that they are entirely situational and are only useful whenever the game requires you to use them. As extra utilities to Crash's movement, they're terrible. And since they all involve you holding the L button, which is the same button for the Crash Dash, they balk the time trials because you will accidentally activate them in the middle of using the Crash Dash all the time. Plus, whenever you use the rocket jump, Crash's model looks like a weasel that just got run over. Kinda does. And he was probably run over by himself when he was in a go-kart on Crash Nitro Kart for the Game Boy. Now don't get me wrong, I'm fully aware how ridiculous the very idea of a GBA port of a PS2 game is. I mean, how do you put this in this? Well, you put it in it. To be I fair though, seeing as the most popular games in the GBA's library consisted of 16-bit styled games, it's really easy to forget that it could do 3D and do it relatively decently with minimal casualties. <laughs> <laughs> Crash Nitro Kart though? Nah mate, listen here sunshine, this one's one of the good ones, you get me? I mean it's impressive from the outset with how detailed the character models are. Sure they're bit crushed and pre-rendered from the PS2 
PS2 models, but I'll be damned, they look pretty spot on. And even though the tracks suffer from the original Super Mario Kart problem of all of them feeling exactly the same because they're all flat, they still look great and run extremely smoothly. Except when there's more than four carts on the screen, and then it starts running like Grandfather Ploppy. But shit, man, aside from that, this is a great version of Nitro Kart. In fact, for how quickly it loads, the fact it's portable, and the fact it feels faster than the original because it's on a tiny screen, yep. I'd argue this is the Whoa. best version of Nitro Kart. It's just as fun as a divorce from a wife that you hate. It's got the power-ups, <laughs> the bosses, a more catchy and memorable soundtrack, and they managed to keep in the risk-reward boost system that made Nitro Kart stand out to begin with, where you jump into a drift and then wait until the very last mm -hmm. second of this gauge running out to activate the most powerful three combo boost you can. I also love the little things, like how they tried simulating the wheels spinning around by having the top half of the wheel flash faster and faster. It's Aww. adorable. They even managed to include voice clips from the PS2 yeah. game. Despite all of these games not being perfect Jeez. though, Crash XS, Crash 2 Entrance, and Crash Nitro Kart are a fantastic little trio for Crash's first proper dive into actual portable gaming. Now, mm -hmm. what should I look at so next? Sex. I, I don't really know. Is there anybody I can ask? I don't know, you're the one with the- Oh, I know! Oh. Scott! Ah! Right, Scott, Scott, this is really important. What portable Crash game should I look at next? I don't care. Oh. Really? I thought you would. Why? Why are you oh. asking me about Crash Bandicoot? Well, I don't know, because mm. you look like him. Oh. <laughs> what? Look, That's we mean. both know that there is more to those blue outlines in all of your videos. Why don't you tell mm. everybody at home where that blue outline comes from? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Shall we zoom out and take a look? You're bluffing. Want to screw man. around and find out? Okay, fine. I'll give you the next game. Too late. No, don't do it. <laughs> Oh god, now everybody knows! You make your videos on Crash's pants, don't you? Yes, I do. On his junk! Yes, fine, now just take this and leave me alone! Thanks, Scott! And it's it's Crash Purple on the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> they could have had a perfect little Game Boy Advance trilogy of Crash games, but oh <laughs> no, they had to make another one and name it after the color of a boil. Let me take you back to mid-2004 for a second, and a horde of screaming kids are storming the gates of Congress, pleading, Nay, Demanding a Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon crossover game. <laughs> Ever since the late 90s, okay, the two PlayStation mascots for. were very aware of each other and had been dropping hints and Easter eggs in their games cross promoting each other, okay, whether it be through secret demos on menu screens or even secret unlockable characters like in Nitro Kart GBA. So it only made sense that at some point they should both get an official adventure together. So with that, yeah, Congress like that. stepped up to the podium and said, FINE! Here's Crash Purple and Spyro Orange. Ooh, this ain't going well. And the disappointment felt was so monumental that when the children all grew up, 16 years later, they Sorry, came just... back with a vengeance. This? This was Crash Purple's fault. But you know what? I can't Crash even pretend not... for a single second that I didn't absolutely love this game when I was 10, because I totally did. But we don't talk about that, so shh. It's actually known as Crash Fusion in Europe, and I spent hours and hours on it. So long, in fact, that I ended up getting every single collectible card in the game, which is only possible from not only finishing the entire game 100%, but also spending thousands of Wumpa Fruit at crate shuffling, shop stalls, and slot machines until you land on random cards that you may be missing, while also having a high chance of landing on cards that are duplicates, and you also need to play a shitload of multiplayer with another person with a Game Boy Advance and a copy of Spyro Orange. But hey, I got all the collectible cards in Crash Purple, so I don't care. I'm better than you. You oh, sure no. So yeah, the final GBA Crash game was part of a double pack that you also needed Spyro Orange for to complete. And I did a video on Spyro Orange itself a while ago. Long story short, it's a watered down and cookie cutter mini game collection. It's one of the worst games I've ever played, and every time I, I see it in that. public, I try to avoid it. The story I'll here is that Cortex is good friends with Ripto from Spyro, and they want to work together. That's it. And then Crash and Spyro meet each other face to face for the first time ever in gaming history and decide to bomb each other with Molotov cocktails. <laughs> These cutscenes as well are absolutely hideous. All they needed to do was get half decent pictures to act as comic strip panels like in all the other Crash GBA games and instead they gave Aku Aku kidney failure. But what about the game itself? Well, I'm thrilled to say it's nowhere near as terrible as Spyro Orange is even though it's identical in structure. You have 2D overworlds where you do extremely basic platforms 
platforming in order to you find know, mini-game levels hiding game around game behind the bike sheds. And then you beat all of them oh. to open a boss and beat the boss to get to the next world. But unlike Spyro Orange, which relied on slow, boring, and piss-easy mini-games that had nothing to do with Spyro's gameplay and were repeated with different sprites over and over and over again, <laughs> at the very least, Crash Purple makes more of an effort to feel like a Crash game, even Ooh. though you can't slide or slide jump in the platforming bits. All they wanted was a good Crash Bandicoot game! Most of the mini-games are Crash platforming the related, man? whether it be side-scrolling auto-riders on the polar bear, breaking all the boxes in a short stage as fast as possible, skimming across water on a motorized lemon, or falling Troll down. Descent. Look, Michael Douglas. <laughs> and even when they aren't doing that, there oh. is more variety to the mini games. There's methodical free roaming tank stages. Wait, what is this? Crashly Crash Bashly. Bash There's sheep blasting with a bazooka before they reach the nitro crates behind you. Well done, Crash, you murdered all of the baby animals. <laughs> Thank you. And there's even jetpack stages where you tap and hold the so A button spread. to control your height as you glide Ooh. along. Take that, Ooh. flappy bird. Don't misunderstand me, though. There isn't anything that imaginative going on. And these money bags tends it to spend all right. the wampa fruit you collect are absolutely useless since they're only good for collecting cards which do absolutely nothing. nothing this means that just playing the actual game here will only take you around an hour to 100 percent complete i'm not See? kidding so as a kid my parents essentially spent 40 pounds on half of a game with my sister getting the other half for another 40 pounds that's 10 times worse so than the first half. thank you mummy. Ah! but now i'm about to throw a spanner in the works did you guys know that these four Crash Bandicoot games are not the only ones on the Game Boy Advance? Yeah? Really? Totally true. There's technically another one that's hidden on the cartridges for Crash Purple and Crash Nitro Kart. And all you've got to yeah. do to access them is put the games in like normal, start them up, but hold the left and right triggers while the game is loading up. It's a secret. Really? Just like Billy Idol's real name. Or last name, I think. William Idealistic. And after all of that fuss, <laughs> you're rewarded with Crash, Crash Party? Party. What, is what the hell is this game like? It's horrible. Oh. <laughs> and with that, we are now cleared out with the Game Boy Ooh. Advance stuff. So okay. I suppose it's time to move on to the PSP game. Ha! Hmm? Got you! There's yeah. actually one more! We're not done yet, so shove that in your blowhole! Ha <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes indeed. The rabbit what? hole keeps going deep. Oh, and we're, we're at the now. final Crash GBA Crash game, Blast. known only as Crash Bandicoot Blast. But as you can see, it's invisible! In because the only way you can play this one is by owning a GameCube copy of The Wrath of Cortex. And amazingly enough, the copy I found on eBay even came with a note. Hey Caddy, sorry to see you're having PC issues, mate! Hopefully our fave game of all time will cheer you up. Thank you, Sprite X6 Big Vintage. Love. Say hello to Mr. and Mrs. Vintage for me and tell them that Sprite X6 is a shit name for their child. Once you get the game in your Oof. GameCube, you start it up like normal and okay, then directly on. plug in your Game Boy Advance into the fourth controller port with a cable that looks like a funny hat. After clicking on the mini game in the main menu okay. and oh, following yeah. the instructions, this downloads the game temporarily onto your Game Boy Advance, I guess? I'm not sure how this Why? whole thing works. But more importantly, after going out of your way to own a Game Boy Advance, own a GameCube, Two own consoles, a copy of Wrath of Cortex, game. and own a connection oh, cable, there. what do you get? You get a game That's where it. you control Crash in a silent nightmare realm using bazookas to shoot down more innocents than George W. H. You play for about one minute and then you get an advert for Crash Bandicoot The Huge oh. Adventure, which was not called The Huge Adventure Again, in this country, so sorry to all the UK kids out there that were going mad looking for a game that didn't exist. Don't forget, this game was available in 2002, Ooh. so let's tally up the price of admission mm -hmm. to have a go at the not very good shooty bang bang Crash game. You would have needed a new GameCube at $200, a new Game Boy Advance at $100, a copy of Wrath of Cortex for $50 and a link cable for what I would assume would be around $20 because I couldn't find an original price anywhere online. That it's means like that this single or... piece of Crash history technically would have costed you $370 just to find it. And after all of that, your secret reward is a game that's the that's equivalent it. to a wet tissue. Sprite X6, Ew. you are not yeah, my mate. I mean, what can you say? You point, you shoot, you point, you shoot, you point, you shoot. But don't shoot your friends though. <laughs> what are they gaining crawling around the area where the bad guys are. 
Why are they popping their heads up when they know I'm shooting? Can't they hear me shooting? It's the only sound that exists in this world. Or maybe they just want to die for a quick and easy way out of this mess, because for all intents and purposes, this game is as much fun as gangrene. And to give gangrene credit, at least it came out a long time ago and is still going strong today. So that's a good idea. The same can't be said for the PSP. Woohoo! We We're back on the PSP! <gasps> the so Puss! This is the portable system I think gaming. I've spent the most time on in my life. Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection, Me and My Katamari, Loco Roco, Midnight Club 3, MGS Peace Walker, Test Drive Unlimited, Tony Hawk's Underground 2, Wipeout Pure, Pata 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 Pa! So many great games. And yes, I even did my fair share of. Do what you want, because apparently. Strangely enough, it's though, free. not a single what one of those I went towards any Crash Bandicoot game. Could yeah, those, weird, uh, right? I got the PSP for my 12th birthday. I was the biggest Crash fan child you could ever meet. Because you like meeting children, don't you? Yet I never bought or asked for any of the Crash games that came out on the PSP. But that changes today ah. with Crash Tag Team Racing. Oh yeah, boy. We're not looking at the PS1 classics that you could have downloaded from the PS Store directly onto your PSP. No, we're talking oh. about the ones that they actually sold on the shelves. And this is a direct Dang. port of the worst Crash Racing game. <laughs> okay then, here we go. Oh, My name bad. is... Um... Doomps. And when I say that this is a direct port of the PS2 game, I really mean it because it is virtually is. identical. The same overworld, the same race courses, the same mechanics, even down to the same cutscenes featuring this mechanical talking pair <laughs> with a German accent. Look! Even my beloved Black Power Gem is gone. Well then, you'd better find it before I piss myself. Obviously, this is a portable system trying to run a pretty intensive PS2 game, so it isn't absolutely perfect. Some corners had to be cut. <laughs> like in the races. And it's the most visible with the graphics. I mean, when you try clashing into another car, you often get stuck in the floor. Ooh. The exhaust pipes look like bum holes. And if you look up to the sky, you'll notice it looks more like, like a, a giant blue sky. wig. But everything else is here and accounted for. And just like like Dover, it's a great port. In fact, dare I say it's my preferred version of the game? Well, aside from when you're running around the park. <laughs> Jesus. And sure, it sucks a bit how you have to stand still every time you want to move the camera since there's only one analog stick and they just couldn't help themselves <laughs> and had to bring back Willy Wumper cheeks. <laughs> oh, Oof. I inked. But when you remember this is... Yeah, to be fair, he didn't really leave an impact considering we never really saw him in any other Crash game ever since, so fair enough. I mean, heck, the two announcers made a word of impact. That's why they're in Crash Team Racing. Yeesh. Anyway, moving on. This is a portable version of a PS2 game that's more or less exactly the same. It's a no-brainer for me. There's just one problem. Hmm? I don't like tag team racing. Again, two Which means I don't like this. And to go into all of the reasons why would be redundant because I already did that in my previous video about bad Crash Bandicoot games. Wink. Wink. <laughs> so even though this is my preferred version, despite the frame rate, it's still the same bad game. Mm -hmm. You can't polish a turd, you know? It's yeah, like being forced worse. to wear a dirty and smelly t-shirt that says, I use crowded trains to sniff women on it. Sure, you can wash <laughs> the bad smell away, but you're still being forced to wear it. But you know what you can't wear? Video games. Eh? And Crash of the Titans on oh. PSP is one of them. Oh god, the oh god, oh god, oh help me! No, we're all gonna die! It's a swarm of angry reds! Now I don't remember any of this game at all from when I first played it on the Xbox 360 not that long ago, but I'm pretty sure the story wasn't Cortex wants Crash to dig a hole and Crash doesn't want to dig the hole and then Cortex wants to kill him. My name is... George. And much like Tag Team Racing, the PSP edition of Crash of the Titans is exactly the same game as the original, but now with even less sound effects. And confusingly enough, they made the brave decision to replace Crash Bandicoot with a melting chimp. Yeah, if you thought the original's character models were gross, the PSP makes them look even worse. Are they covered in Vaseline? Maybe these are the manly yeah, toys we were looking likes. for earlier. And Aku Aku may be oh. captured, oh. but he loves it. What more can I say? You run around through linear empty areas empty beating areas. up monsters, and then sometimes you can stun bigger monsters that you can possess, and then use them to beat up more monsters. It really is the same exact damn game the, again, just, just with PSP graphics. graphics. Yeah. 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 
How does anybody Jesus like Christ. this Crash? It's not that this game isn't classic Crash, why I don't like it. It's that it's boring. The combat is boring, True. the levels not are really boring, engaging. the jumps are boring, the mind jacking slows you down. But I go over mm. all of this in my other video about bad Crash games. Wink, wink, wink. Oh no! I'm a bad Crash game on PSP! Oh boy. Just like my new oh, mind. Mind. Yep, if the PSP version of Titans is anything to go by, I can only assume that this one is the same story. My name yeah, is... All I can say is, uh... Uncle D. Now, I may not have remembered that much okay, about Titans, on. but when it comes to Mutant, I remember that game just as much as that classic line from Lord of the Rings. You shall you not shall touch not the ring! Now, wouldn't you know, it may be portable, but this is the same thing as the 360 version, which is more or less already the same as Titans. You run around, beat up monsters, mind jack them, and then storm the infidels! The platforming is a little bit better and such, but again, I've already talked about that, so I can't say much else. You still have to run around and collect Coco's parts and keep them in your basement, and Crash still looks like a cosplaying, malnourished old man. Uh, why? Now that... That, that is Oof. just beautiful. Hang it up in my conservatory. In conclusion, Mind oh, Over Mutant has... on PSP is just a better version of Titans on PSP, but now the cutscenes look absolutely singing. disgusting, and that sound quality is something to behold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. not like that. Hi. Oh my Hello. god, you're the world famous Idris Elbow. Yep, that's Elba. me. Uh, what, what are you doing here? Uh... Here's a game. <laughs> Oh, well, cool. Thanks, how man. nice of you. What's yeah. I meet a celebrity Bye. and he Bye. gives me a video game. Could things possibly get yes. any better? So Crash of the oh. Titans on the Nintendo DS is a Jeez. game that greets you with Crash what? looking at possibly the worst he's ever looked. God. Hey there, man. You look no one check healthy. Well, I suppose I need to pick a save file. And whoever had this cartridge before me had a file on here badass called Badass. <laughs> I, I, I can't overwrite that. It's too good. I need to start on a fresh file. And my name is Grimp. I've got a question for you. Do you like Crash of the Titans on Xbox 360 and PSP? Well, then have I got some great news for you. Take a guess what you do in this yep. game. You, you run, run around through empty areas, beating up monsters, and then, and then sometimes, sometimes you can stun bigger, bigger monsters yeah. that you can possess, and, and then, then use them to beat up more monsters. It really is the same exact damn game, game again, again, just with Nintendo DS graphics. Oh, Pretty hey, much. Coco. Yeesh. Coco. Yeah. How you doing? Uh, you alright? Okay, that you looks look, creepy. You're a little bit sick. You're a little bit under the weather. You want me to go get you? You want to. You want to. You wanna need some monkey donalds? Monkey Donald! In all fairness though, I think I actually prefer this one over all of the other ones. I mean, the levels really? are still long, the gameplay is still repetitive, and it is still yet another version oh, of boy. Crash of the Titans, <laughs> Titans, but at the very least, they do try to make the DS version its own thing instead of exactly the same thing but with worse graphics. The levels themselves, oh. while still long, are a little bit shorter than the main game, the platforming is a little bit more interesting, <laughs> and check it out, they even added in classic Crash bonus platforms to take you hey, to a side-scrolling bounds round <laughs> I'm a leg. I'm a Plus, leg. I've got to say this is the best version of the crash dance I think I've ever seen look at the confidence <laughs> in that hip thrust it's a statement look at the certainty look at the conviction. He is giving the air his seed. And then he goes and ruins don't. everything by including pointless touchscreen mechanics. It's a Nintendo DS game, so they I'm not surprised, but it's they? still very annoying. If you want to possess they a stunned enemy, you need, need to swipe screen. the screen towards the direction that the enemy is. And the same goes for it, firing know? projectiles, which would be fine, except most of the time it barely registers or outright doesn't work. Oh, and did See? you think the PSP Mind Over Mutants sounded bad? <laughs> Then you, sir, have not Good heard Lord. Crash of the Titans on the DS. Dang, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, my favorite enemy, old man breathing down foam. Yeah, I feel stronger already. That pathetic hairball sleeps through anything. Did they? A laugh did they track? add a laugh track real? to the cutscenes? A laugh the track. Cash? In a Cash Banuka game? <laughs> oh great, Crash okay. farts whenever he double jumps now. I'm happy they included this. That's just what he needed. You know, because farts are just so funny. <laughs> nah, right then. What's hey, next? Back. What's next? Mind over uh, mutant no on the DS. Yeah, Jesus. because you know what's even better than two versions of Mind Over Mutant? 
three versions of Mind Over Mutant. I just don't understand this. Did all of these multiple versions of Titan sell well enough to justify making this? Who was buying these? Was it you? Well, then screw you. Well, whatever the case, it doesn't matter. Here we are with the Durst version of Mom. And what do you know? It's exactly the same thing as the Xbox 360 and PSP version. Wait, wait. What? No. Hang on. Is this... Is this a 2D crash okay. platformer? Like the GBA games? Looks and we can bounce so on crates, double jump, belly flop, slide and slide jump, and even do the death tornado spin glide? My god, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mind Over Mutant DS. I never thought I'd say this, but there's a version of Mind Over Mutant that I actually really like that doesn't rely on any kind of monster possession. You swindled me. You were saying. Well, that didn't last very long now, did it? Don't let this game trick you like it did oh, me. Boy. For a good five minutes, I thought we had something different here that I could happily recommend. But once you realize it is exactly the same mindless button mashing, monster stunning, tree breaking gameplay you all know and no, no, but now it's on a more restrictive 2D plane, giving you even less chances for combat variety and chances to get away from enemies. You then sit back and realize, Seriously? gosh, no this really is the worst version of the Titans and Mutant formula that you can play. You can only move left and right, Seriously? which is extremely limiting in a beat em up styled game with enemy groups and any monster that's taller than you. You just can't avoid most of the attacks thrown at you. Which yeah, is particularly <laughs> irritating when the bigger enemies attack faster than your button mashing can physically do. Every encounter with a big monster will turn into a single button smashing game of whose health bar empties the fastest. Oh, and yeah. you see him down there? Yeah? Bloody him! Hey. He never shuts up! Is that a mouth guard? Oh dear. You alright? The external layer of my bottom teeth fell out. Also, what in the oh, hey, veiny you know. flaps is this? They didn't even bother voicing the cutscenes for this one. And it came oh. out after Titans on the same bloody console. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I, uh, I got nothing left to say <laughs> Oh. Alright, just don't send away. <laughs> I've got leprosy. <laughs> okay, I'm done. No more we Titans, no more mutants. I've talked about those series of <sighs> games even yeah, more times. than the good Crash three. games he's actually best known <sighs> for. So I think it's time Please to move on to something else. Done. What's next? Ah, oh? thank TBA. you, child okay, sweatshop factory worker. Your check for three pennies will be on the floor next oh, to- I don't want to live anymore. The story here is that Cortex Again? is a baddie, Crash is a goodie, and you need to stop Jesus, Cortex before he slithers into your there. bottom. And as for the now. game, take a wild guess what you do. Uh, Go uh, on, yes. take a guess. You, you run, run around, around in the air. Air. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it's in 2D. Air so just like Mind Over Mutant DS, you can't really do much with enemies <sighs> other than hit one button over and over and over again until one of you dies. This is downright embarrassing. I can't think of any other okay, Crash game that has had as many it? official console ports as uh, Crash of the Pissing Titans, and the original wasn't even that good to them. begin with. <laughs> and now you get to play it again, but with very yeah. stiff controls and cardboard cutouts. I would say more, Ooh. but we currently live in a YouTube climate where if I say anything out of order, there's a very high chance that I'll... <laughs> Look here, even Akawaki was fed up with this shit. Booga dee booga da boodle bomb. Why does he have around. the nose of Miss Piggy? And with that... We are <sighs> finally done with all of the portable console crash games. Yep. You sure? None. I'm so all no crash done. Of the Titans? There isn't a single <sighs> one left. That's gonna waste. I'm all finished. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, again? you thought I forgot about Crack this one, didn't you? Bang? Well, trust me, I wish I had. Uh, but okay. alas, I remember. Oof. Bugger me in Baghdad, I remember. Now immediately, the red this flag should be well. waving in your face for two reasons. One, Zero. this is a party game that's a spiritual sequel to the already below mediocre Crash Bash. Please don't lose, yeah, just let one in. Well. Come on, let one yeah. in for me. What? what, the, what? Huh? Where did that come from? What? I spat all How over my chin. <laughs> <laughs> and two, uh, this hell? title screen is completely fail? blank. While a skinny hunchbacked uh, goblin is lolloping ugh. away from a purple sock with legs. Time to pick our main character for this Come whale on, of a party game then. And now I regret not killing myself when I was five. Can somebody out Yeesh. there please tell me what these things are and the why hell? they were put into this game? This is 2006. How do fake Game Boy Advance oh, 3D graphics from 2002 look better than this? 
house. Crash looks like if Jeff Ooh. the Killer turned into Look a kite. Arms. Coco has Eagles. trees for ears and her arms are the oars of a rowing boat. And you know what I thought Purr of the Tiger was missing since he first oh. appeared in Crash 3? Human legs and short shorts. Coco's face okay, too. Why? My God, how much more of a minger could you look? Her face is so mm. mangled it looks like a hedge maze. I haven't been this disgusted since I last looked at my stepdaughters. Hey honey, what? have you seen my coat? Don't worry Caddy, I found it. Ugh. You know what, I'm gonna pick pin- you know, I always wonder, like, are the kids okay with this? Like, them just, like, making fun of them in the videos, like, the whole, you know, all that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, like I said, I hope they're okay with this. Like, they have to be, have them accused of, you know, child abuse. Like, anyway, or neglect, I guess. In Stripe for now, because he is the least awful looking one, and, and I'm going to call him Mumps. Mumps. And if you chose the single player mode, you won't be happy with the story either. We've got this new character that has never appeared in any Crash media before or since this game, and he's called... You know what? He's never mentioned by name in this entire really? opening. A brand new character for yeah, Crash, a brand face. new game, and we don't even know who he is, aside from the fact he makes a face like... <laughs> he has been trying Where's to find it? a thing Super for Crystal? a long time, but can't find a thing. So he created a tournament full of battles in order to trick the participants Animal into race. finding the thing he's looking for. What? Hey kids, I'm Aku Aku, and I'm gonna tie you in a sack and throw you in a river! In the most basic terms, Crash Boom Bang Bing Bong Boo Bingly Bungly Boo is a Mario Party ripoff, but just Oof. worse. You roll a dice, Man, move along a board, deal with whatever space you land on, fight in minigames, collect points from minigames, use them on the game board to help you win, hey. pick up items to help you or disrupt other players. It ticks all the boxes, including that single one that you missed because you're a stupid twat. So off the bat, it does mm -hmm. sound a bit more interesting than crash and bash and but it's how the game decides to try being different from Mario Party when it all goes arse over tea kettle. First of all, you right. all roll the dice and move at the same time, meaning you really? can never strategize what items to use now or save for later because you never know where characters are going to be or what space they're going to land on or what items they're going to use at the same time as you. And then secondly, instead of mm -hmm. keeping things streamlined and simple like every okay. other Mario Party game, they decided to make the game work like this. Go ahead. <sighs> At the start of your turn, you only have a few seconds to make and perform every decision. If you want to roll the dice, you press the touch screen and skip the countdown. But if you want to use an item, you have to open a separate menu in the touch screen that obscures the map of the board. So you don't know if the item will be useful for you on the board because you can't see where anybody is. If you take too long deciding what item to use, your turn goes ahead without you having a say and the game moves on like normal. But if you aren't paying attention to the top screen, you won't know where you are or the other players are because that's where the game's happening. Sometimes you'll come to a fork in the road where the game tells you to pick a direction to move. But in order to do that, you need to use the D-pad to choose instead of the touch screen, which you've been using the whole time. And by the way, make sure you use the touch screen to open the map up when you use the D-pad, otherwise you won't know where you're going, except in these parts where you can only pick one direction, so why are you giving me a choice? Oh, okay, what's going on? Pinstripe okay, is leaving. See you later, buddy. Get out of the game while you still can. So yeah, more often than not, you'll land on spaces that take you to some other random part of the world, but none of this is made clear to you, and you won't have any idea where you or the rest of the players are since you disappear from the original map when this happens, and it gets even more confusing when someone uses an item that randomly changes the position of every player on the board. You collect points from minigames, but that's only if any minigames get triggered, and the game can even end before the end of the 10-term limit, depending on how far ahead a player makes it across the board. But making it to the end is not the deciding factor on the winner, because ultimately it's who has the most points from the minigames, and they can be very difficult to win because the other players can distract you as many times as they want by spamming their own stickers on your screen, thus obscuring your view and causing you to lose. However, luckily, you can combat this by using your own stickers and throwing them on the other players, but the game wants you to also customize the sticker with the touchpad in the middle of your round in a separate touchscreen menu next to the map and the item menu when you've only got a few oh, seconds to decide what? what items to use and what direction you want to go on the board. So what ends up happening is that you're trying to make your own sticker, but then your move happens automatically and you don't have a clue where you are or where anyone else is, and you think that making stickers is easy with the touchscreen, but it isn't because in order to customize the, the default sticker, you can't just drag Jesus and drop Christ. whatever you want from any menu. You need to go to the correct sub menu of the item of the sticker that you want to bin in order to move that individual item to the bin. So you have to go through a million different sub menus to guess what the correct category is for each item on the canvas that you want to replace and then after all of that you have to go back to the other sub menu that you went to in order to pick the thing that you want to drag and drop into it so by the end this was all I was able to do because I couldn't figure out how to do anything better and it perfectly sums up how I feel about this whole thing in the oh ooh, oh and Jesus like we're trying to like pick to multitask with this like we're not Einstein like come on give us a breathing room huh <sighs> You want to talk about the mini games? Are right. they fun? Do they control oh, well? Are they better than the crap they had in Crash to Knee Bash to Knee? Sure, let's go over them. Why not? There's a game where you play Spot the Difference. There's a game where you guess what number a baseball will be thrown at. There's a game where you guess where a person will appear from the floor and hope you can slowly walk over to them before the computer players, which is never. There's a game where you blow. Just blow. And I got oh. that one three times on the same match. Oh, and if you lose some of the mini games, you can get knocked out 
but then you have to sit there and watch everybody else finish it without you. And no, Seriously? you can't skip it. I tried. This is more exciting than the NBA. Oh great, well now the game won't pick up anything from my microphone at all for no reason. Blow the balloon up, you blasted meat! And it's a shame that it isn't the 1920s because Mumps isn't doing so well here. You wanna know my favorite part of this game though? There isn't even an option from the start to play any of the mini games separately from the rest of it. Roll up, roll up, come and get your pooey ticket for pooey cricket. Smash! I can confidently say out of every yeah. crash game I've ever played in my life, this is the worst one. Easily. Ugh. No contest. Agree. This one wins the brown trophy. Congratulations, Crash Boom Bang. That takes a lot of effort. Okay. Hey, you! Yes, yeah. you over there! You! Yes. Come back Get here up. right now, young man! You can't keep getting away with this! I've played every single portable game you've ever made, and none of them seem to be very good, so what are you playing at? Don't you run away from me! I'll, I'll, I'll get you in a second, just you wait and see! Wait, no, wait. I... I saw the tab, that's... Couldn't tell that was... Crash on the run? On the run yeah. from who? The IRS. Well, would you look at that? Not only the latest portable crash game, but the latest crash game period released in 2021 for current gen iPhone and Android devices, developed by the same people behind Candy Crush. <laughs> My favorite. Yep, I didn't see that one coming either. But in all fairness, the idea of a non-stop running crash game where you swipe left, right, up and down to avoid obstacles is one that does make perfect sense. When you consider all the boulder chasing levels from the past and the fact that Crash is mostly a linear 3D corridor platformer to begin with, there's nothing wrong with the concept. I mean, even Sonic Dash was a fun time a few years back. And it's yet another crash game you can play on the toilet. What's not to love? Wow. Adding to that, on my iPhone XS Max, the game looks really nice for an iPhone app and runs at a consistent and 60 frames per second, even though I tend to get stuck in the floor okay. quite a lot. People think I'm insane because I am frowning all the time. Crash Bandicoot on the run is a very simple I'm game. In the single head. player, you pick one obstacle course level at a time within many different worlds, which always end with you defeating the henchman of the boss of the world that's that you're in. Beat all of the henchmen the and you unlock the boss hey, fight, engine. which is more of the same, except you need to tap the screen to fire projectile items at the correct moment while avoiding more obstacles. After that, you unlock more replay aspects of the game, like gem challenges, gem where you have to collect all Wumper Fruit in a stage or defeat all the enemies, and the time trial relics, where you need to break second stopping crates and get to the end of the stage with the fastest possible route. My god, there's even more platinum relics for me to collect. All of this together unlocks more levels and contributes to completion. It's the basic shindig. So it sounds like a done deal, right? A decent crash game that plays well, controls well, and follows the formula well. Guess not. But there's one massive thing I've neglected to mention. In between oh. every level you choose to do, you have to wait. And I don't mean that there Seriously? are level cooldown timers before you can attempt them again or anything like that. Really? I mean you need special collectible tools to access every single level. And you get these tools Seriously? by finding ingredients in the endless oh, running right. collection levels and then putting the correct ingredients into a machine. And then those tools sometimes need to be added back into the machine with other tools to get different tools, which then sometimes need to be done multiple times over in order to access a single level. To give you an idea how long this may take. Well, there's only a certain limited amount of ingredients in every single collection run and only a certain type of ingredient that exists in all the levels that you have available. And after you do that collection run, there's a cooldown in order for you to do Two that collection hours? run again. Boy. Then there's the cooldown of you adding the ingredients into the machines to create a tool. And for each element version of each tool, you only have three slots to create those after upgrading them. So even if you have the right amount of ingredients, you are most likely going to be stuck waiting for one lot of tools to be made before making more. You can also do special mm -hmm. challenges runs for each level of each world where you need to hit every crate in order to get more ingredients but not only does that mean you having to play the challenge perfectly in one go on every attempt mm -hmm. but also means that you have to wait 24 hours in order to do the challenge again once you beat it and that's only for Jesus one Christ. kind of ingredient add this on top of all Seriously? the other tools you need to create with other lesser tools that also need creating and this makes the whole game move along slower than old Ooh. porridge you have to repeat so many runs of exactly the same stages over and over again just to farm the items you need to unlock problems. one Great. single player level on top of the wait time. And I have no idea if this was included only recently, but I did notice that the collection runs were made literally three times faster than they ever were when I originally started playing. So they clearly knew this was a drag, but that doesn't fix the issue with repetition, and you will very quickly notice the lack of power-ups, enemy types, and obstacles throughout the entire game. Oh gee, thanks okay, game, how... serves me right for walking on the normal, it? regular floor. So you know what that means? You either end up 
in a miserable grind where you check your phone every few minutes, every hour of every day in order to keep on top of your ingredient farming, or you give them all your money. I am fully aware that this is a free-to-play game, so in many ways it's pointless complaining about a gameplay system where you get more out of it by shelling out a few quid, but I do think Cash Banuka Has The Ruds goes way too overboard with how little you can physically progress without spending money. I put a decent amount of hours into the game when it first launched, and I got pretty far after a few hours, but even after all of those combined hours, I still don't even have half the levels completed that I need to get to world. 3. You can either use money to buy ingredients immediately or use them to buy crystals which are the rarest commodity in the entire game and those are the things that are used to speed up all of those horrific cooldown timers. And yes there's always the multiplayer angle if you've got the tickets to play in the first place where you make up your own team and then head to the races with ghost characters in an endless running mode in order to beat their furthest distances but that's only a tiny portion of the game and it doesn't really help you along the campaign that much. It is pretty fun to get trophies which then get collected by all of your team members onto a leaderboard so that you can win prizes for a season, but that's hardly worth investing into the tickets to begin with. But hey, just in case any of you were wondering and wanted to join in, I'm the head of the Woolly Wumpers, and the best run I was able to do in the multiplayer lasted me just over 16 minutes, which, let me tell you, is way harder than it sounds, because you end up going this fast after that much time. I have to stress though, this game is indeed free, so you aren't harming yourself by downloading it, but if you ask me, there's a thousand other free-to-play games I'd recommend over this purely because of how tectonically slow this one is without dropping any money towards it. I have got way more mileage from many other free games and still feel satisfied without dropping a cent towards them. Yeah, I've been inconvenienced in a few places, but the core game is still great and you can still do a lot. This though, this is more than an inconvenience. Without money, it's boring and I don't want to play it anymore. A Loki Funko Pop! My advice is to treat Crash on the Run like fast food. It's really lovely in small doses, but if you have too much of it, you'll get gout. And then you need to cut it off for your own health. Now! What about the other Crash iOS games that released on the App Store? Yep, believe it or not, this is not the only one. In fact, there were two before it. Crash Nitro Kart 3D from 2009 from the, uh, and Crash Nitro Kart 2 from 2010. But unfortunately, there are absolutely zero ways to play them anymore unless you already have them on an iPhone with those games pre-installed. They were taken off of Apple stores years ago and can't even be emulated, which is a huge slap in the nuts. But at least we've got this review from Macworld to go off of. Pro. Nothing. Cons. Nothing. Verdict. Nothing. I guess that's why they were taken down. And with that, yeah, we done? I think we're done. Finally, we have covered every single Crash Bandicoot oh, portable game ever made. <gasps> Caddy, when did wait, you wait. get a blimp? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's me. And I'm here to give you what items that never helped anybody, just like the blimp. Huh. I don't think you're right. Silence, wench, and take my next useless item. What's that? Engagement. Fiddle dee dee, fiddle dee dee, fiddle dee dee. Doo. This here is the Nokia N gauge. Yep. I know. It's a video game console cross cell phone that came out in 2003 really? and it's gloriously shit. It's a taco. It's the end of a spade. It's a weighing scale for a tiny little man. Do you remember all of those images going around the mm -hmm. internet years and years ago? Yeah, people weren't doing that to be funny. That is exactly how you had to hold this <laughs> thing when making calls because the microphone is down here and the earpiece is up here. <laughs> Come on. Okay, why? I can hear the sea. Seriously? I love this thing. I think it's an extremely cool time capsule for the early 2000s. Mm, but I'm not here to tell you why this thing failed as a phone and a game system. I'm not Derek, it's me, Derek from Stop Derek's from Derek. Instead, I am here to tell okay. you that there is indeed an N-Gage exclusive Cash Banuka game from June 2004. Crash Nitro Kart. Nitro Kart. With huh. online features that don't work anymore. <laughs> Yeah, this thing yeah, no. really did try marketing itself as a games console. They had games that came in boxes, with cartridges no less. And in order for you to swap these cartridges out, you had to take the entire back of the phone off and remove the battery. I, I don't know why nobody bought this! Mix that all together with phone dialing keys yeah. for buttons and an upright rectangular screen that doesn't show you anything around the left and the right of you, and most of the games that released for this thing were virtually unplayable. Impressive, for sure, but terrible. Yeah. <laughs> 
<gasps> Hang on a second. Whoever I bought this from on eBay left their SIM card in it. Well, it would just be rude to not look through all of their contacts. Let's do it. Bro. Who should I call? Ashton? Cal? Toby? Toby? Hamby? Corinne? Zaza? Kieran? Lowry John? Kieran? G. Matthias. Or lowercase Amy. As you can see, my copy of Nitro Kart on the N-Gage is still sealed and brand new off of the shelf from 17 years ago. And since nobody bought this stupid railway tunnel or any of the games for it when they came out, guess how much this set me back? £103.50p. That's Ooh. roughly $150 for a game that will most likely look like this. And since this is still indeed wrapped up in its original packaging and is quite valuable, I need to make sure that I'm really careful before deciding to... Now, surprisingly, this isn't actually based mm -hmm. on any other version of Nitro Kart. No, really? not even the GBA version. It's its own gruesome beast. And yet, somehow, isn't gruesome? In fact, I'd say it looks even better than the GBA version. Yeah, imagine that. A 2003 Nokia phone looks better than a Nintendo console, but shit, man, this doesn't look too bad. And the tracks aren't flat either. There's more bends, hills, ramps, everything. Consider me impressed. And then you remember you're playing on phone dialing buttons and you can only see what's directly in front of you. And the buttons are massive and really far apart like the goddamn in television. And the joypad is horribly stiff. And then you realize you spent a lot of money on these things. And you yeah, do a big messy. You know what I want to know, just though? just don't really work out well. What do you think a hands-free model would look like? Hey, mom, I'm on my way. By the way, do you <laughs> mind if I sat on the cake? I can't see it. Is that it? Are we done? done now? Surely. Surely. After <sighs> looking at the Nokia N-Gage version of Crash Nitro Kart, I must have covered every single Crash Bandicoot portable game known to man. Yes? Please? Good. Perfect. Yay. So thank you for watching, ladies and gents, and I'll see you all on the... <laughs> okay, <laughs> come on. <laughs> there we got more. Yeah, we're still not done. Look, we've also got huh? Crash Bandicoot games that came out on old whoa, whoa, whoa. smelly brick phones all throughout the 2000s. Oof. Do any of you guys remember Java games on these things? To cut an extremely long story short, Java was the most really? popular inbuilt mobile phone software for running complicated apps and playing video games on something that looks like a steam press laptop okay. for a business rat. And throughout the 2000s, every Diving single good? thing you can imagine got a Java game available for mobile acid? phones. What? And all you had to do was buy a magazine, look for the mobile downloads page, and write under under the ringtones and next door to the thongs were all the games you could pay for and download straight to your phone. FIFA, Pirates of the Caribbean, Worms, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Everything you can imagine ended up on mobiles, along with our favourite hip thrusting orange guinea pig. <laughs> And let's start off with the game that everyone else got if they didn't have a decent mobile phone. September 2004's Crash Nitro Kart. Not for the Game Boy Advance, no. not for the Nokia N-Gage, but for early 2000s Java well, cellular telephones. Fun fact, this was the first ever Crash Bandicoot game released for Java-only mobile devices, so my expectations are not very high. And I hope you enjoyed that, because that's all the sounds you get. I think I'll pick Crash Ooh. for this game because he definitely looks the most normal. Cortex looks like a mouldy banana, Coco Ooh. looks like an angry young boy with a bleeding mouth, and Crunch... <laughs> Crunch looks like Winnie Hello. the Pooh. Three, two, one, and go! go. Yeah! yeah. Again, so here we are, everybody. Crash Nitro mm -hmm. Kart on a 2004 mobile phone. A racing game where you chug along in dead silence trying to get speed boosts from congealed pits of blood. Honestly, to give it its dues, I remember playing a lot worse than this on my old mobile when I was a kid. This doesn't look too bad, and it runs surprisingly slick, but... Like, you, you still yeah, had no. to pay money for this, and all you do is hold the top of your keypad up while turning left and right while pressing the confirm button to use an item. WHOA! It was a noise! Tell but if you want to get really old school, you can always use the number pad to go forward, turn and use items. But at that point, you'll end up with blisters. Wow. How the hell did they expect you to do that? Oh, cool! An invincible Aku Aku mask power-up! That was it? The end. Oof. Were you impressed by that? <sighs> 
Well, if you weren't, they made another one one year later called Crash Racing. Oh, praise Crash? Gordon the Dude. Big Engine. I can choose to turn sounds on? Yes, please. <laughs> I've changed my I mind, can I turn them everything. off? This game, if you can believe it, is a 2005 mobile phone Java version of Tag Team Racing. They couldn't do the tag team though, so it's just Crash Racing. Which sounds like how my granddad drives. Look, there's even Nina Cortex and Pasadena Opossum to play as. But I'm definitely picking Cortex this time, because Christ yes. almighty, his hair could do with a wash. And my god, yet again, the game is totally silent. What, pray tell, is the point of asking me if I want sounds if the only sounds were on the goddamn first still image? It doesn't matter either way, though, because even though this looks nice and colourful, it's just a choppier and slower version of Nitro Kart Mobile. And after getting hit by three invisible things one after the other, I promptly gave up. Sorry, Cortex, we'll drive you to the hairdressers tomorrow. In which case, maybe we should take a look back at 2000. 2004 seems to be a good solid year for Crash Bandicoot mobile phone games. So let's check out Crash to Insanity on Java and see if that's any good. Now this one came out two months after Nitro Kart Java, so perhaps it's a bit more advanced. I'm excited for this. We'll also see, available on console. On. Well, what a great start. Wow, I've just really been told that the game I paid there? for is rubbish, but please trust us, the actual version is better. <laughs> you can't afford you the real one, the real Crash. One. Ah! Time for us to pick a file then, and... Uh, huh. Why? Why is that there? I'm not picking that one. Ah, okay, so this is a platformer that takes those Cortex escort missions from the original Twin Sanity and turns them into a side-scroller. You help him, he helps you. I can see where they're going with this, and it doesn't look too bad either. You know, except for the five frames per second and the fact that Cortex looks like a walking mound of lard. Oh, and again, there's no sound, but you can jump, you can double jump, you can spin. What, what more could you ask for? Oh, cool, a TNT box. <laughs> What? Oh, I see. I see how it is. What's the point of having the nitro crates and TNT crates if both of them blow you up immediately? And what kind of death sound is that? There's no sound in this game as it is, but instead of at least trying an explosion, you do that? Hey, Ollie, catch! Oh, catch. Thanks. What is it? Well, it's okay, because at least I can get my life back. Oh. Uh, what? Apparently I, not. I can't jump up and break boxes? Hang on, that can't be right. Let me try over here. No, Wait, no, you can't do that. This is not a crash game. It's a wolf in Bandicoot's clothing. Everything you expect a crash game to do just doesn't happen. It's like when you grab a wet wipe and you expect it to be wet, but it's all dry and crusty because it's been sticking out the top of the packet and someone folded it back in. Yeah, that's what this game is. A bad wet wipe. Time to stand on the switch to clear the path for Cortex then. Any this is great. Now? Oh, there he is. There and just are. in time too, because now he has to clear the way for me. The game, the game froze. Wait for Cortex who will free the way for you. Well game, I think I'm going to be waiting a long time for that. This game is poo on a plate. In fact, no, it's not poo on a plate. Poo on a plate is better because at least you've got something to eat. Okay, so you know I said that Crash Nitro Kart for Java phones was yeah. the first mobile phone crash game they released back mm -hmm. in September 2004. Well, yeah, it was the first box standard Java mobile phone crash game, but it wasn't the standard. first mobile phone crash game. That honor oh. actually belongs to a game on another phone entirely. Something like. that was a little bit different from every other phone on the market at the time. Oh man, are you talking about me? No, not Kia. Kia. Oh, I could be a phone if you let me. Just go phone in your pocket car, and what? vibrate with me. We know. No, no Kia. Kia. The honor of the world's first Crash Mobile game yeah, belongs to Crash Twin Sanity 3D, which came out in Dang. June 2004, three months prior oh. to Nitro Kart Java, but exclusively for phones that were oh. capable of running advanced 3D Java graphics under the Vodafone Live series of phones oh. in the UK. Only five mobile phones were compatible in this country, with this one being one of them, the Nokia 6630. Not only capable of hey. running better quality games, but that also came with a softer and more joyful stick feeling d-pad for them and because of all of this new technology they made a game that sticks out more than billy from philly with the great big big willy nose yep here it is check it out oh oh it's so it's beautiful my god i just i want to put myself all over you know i, I think i oh. found my new booty call and it has a nice wide pair of hips twin sanity 3d actually thinks it can get away with a free roaming 3d platformer on this. Yeah. I know you've got more of a joystick feel to your D-pad, guys, but it's still a D-pad for 2004 mobile phone menu navigation. You can't Hello play a that, game like this on it. What are you? A nincompoop? At least we can say one thing for sure, though. It definitely has sound. In fact, maybe it has too much sound because that menu music 
is one of the scariest things I've ever heard in my life. I don't want to be a huge <laughs> donk here. I can at least praise the ambition and attempt of a uh -oh. 3D corridor Why platformer on this kind of technology, sideways. and it actually does move along better than I ever expected it to. In fact, for it running on a phone that looks like this, the graphics give me a flagpole. It's certainly mighty impressive, but like, none of that matters. You can't play it. Oh, and what about these cutscenes? Cortex! Cortex. You shall be Let destroyed. destroyed. Uh? And that bandicoot and his friends will be our slaves. Fear the wrath of the twins. Never. Not even if I have to team up with that blithering bandicoot to stop. Come on, you bumbling fool. Twin Sanity 3D is exactly like dating somebody based entirely on their genits. Sure, they may look respectable yeah. and you may even have a bit of fun, but you know it isn't gonna last. In which case, uh. let's head back to original Java phones with Crash Nitro Kart 2, released in 2007. And yes, this is a sequel to Crash Nitro Kart 1, Java. It's not a sequel to the PS2 version, or a sequel to the GBA version, or a sequel to the N-Gage special version, even though that's a mobile Wait, phone, and it isn't the same thing as Crash Nitro Kart 2 on iOS from 2010, even though that's also a mobile phone. My head is in pain, please shoot me in it. I can at the very least say this, if you're running a half-decent Java-installed mobile phone from 2007 and you can ignore Crash dressing up as a rice farmer, then this game is easily the best mobile phone Crash game so far. It looks really good for the technology available, plus there's multiple characters and cars to pick from, there's multiple tournaments as well as single races, there's background music that plays all throughout the game, thank the lord, you've got a load more power-ups than the other kart racers, your kart transforms in some of the tracks, and since acceleration is automatic, Automatic. All you need to worry about is occasional braking, turning left and right, and then they saved up the number two or top of your joypad for the jump, which not only allows you to bounce over hazards, but also collect hidden crash letters that once all collected can briefly turn you into an unstoppable monster truck. Why is this game slapping as hard as it is? Okay, fine. It's nowhere near as great of a racing game as Sonic Freeloaders, but I need to send a very big well done to the developers. IP for you. Oh, do you now? Oh, and look, they even included my favorite Crash Bandicoot catchphrase. Use the carjacking bonus to steal opponents' carts. Hello, I'm Crash Hello. Bandicoot. Right, hey, so, are we ending on we a positive now? note now? Have we done every Crash Bandicoot mobile <sighs> phone game yet? No? Seriously? There's a mobile phone version? Of Crash of the Titans? Oh, oh, oh. Jesus Christ, How much people can just grab that whole go? <laughs> Is this a joke? No, I mean it. Is this know. a bit? Are we going through Crash of the Titans again, again on a Java phone from 2007? This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard since whoever decided to name this mushroom shit take. And it's even more of a joke that, amazingly enough, oh. the game looks great for the technology. Look at this. Look at the animations. Jeez, Look at the fluidity. Look at the overworld with dead body Crash with a mouth like a post box. I'm stunned. Truly, I am. This looks better than the expensive and proper Game Boy Advance version. Does this okay. mean... Does this mean this could be the best version of Crash of the Titans? No, yes, no. No? I know it looks pretty good, and don't get me wrong, it really does, but what you need to keep on remembering with these things is that you're using a tiny directional pad or phone number dialing buttons. Whichever you end up with, they're clunky, they're rigid, and if you play any kind of fast-paced action game like this where you need to move all over the place, you'll be rubbing your thumb around these stiff, clicky things so much that you'll eventually start a fire. <laughs> By the way, I never thought I'd say this, but I can't for the life of me get past this giant boxing elephant. He just loves hitting me into his lovely blue hole here. And even if he doesn't manage to do that, Crash all of a sudden feels like he could go for a swim and does it on his own anyway. I promise I did not move him that way. Are we done yet? No, of course not. Why would we be done? Here's a blackberry. Can you eat it? No. no. What does it taste like? Metal? Greece. Crash Mutant <laughs> Island, a game that came out exclusively for random Blackberry mobile phones in July 2009. And don't be angry with me, but the only version of this game I could find online was the long and vertical version, which definitely doesn't fit on a screen like this because it's supposed to look like this, but Christ almighty, I'm trying here, and there's only so much a mere mortal man can do, leave me alone. And I'm absolutely shocked to say that this is easily the best mobile Crash platforming game so far. It's the closest thing to a Crash game at the very least. I do hate how floaty and slow the controls feel, and the 
pace of the game is ruined by how you just mash the 5 key to punch enemies for what feels like 3 years, but it looks the best, it plays the best, the levels are multi-layered, there's a lot of exploration for rewards, there's a Rayman starred overworld, it's on a mobile phone that should have juices in it but it doesn't, it's the first Ew. mobile Java crash game that has music and sound effects at the same time, and for some reason it also has put oh, oh, no. While Crash is quietly resting, a panicked bandicoot arrives. Wait, there's Wait, more there's than one bandicoot one? that looks like Crash? This is uncanny. Oh. I don't like it. And why does he look like he's from Chicken Run? Wow, well, man, That's we're right. getting so advanced and hashtag modern warfare. We've got quick time events now. I'm a very sad and lonely man. Crash, oh. a giant flying machine just took your sister Coco. Smells like her fanny. <laughs> And there's another one! Seriously? I'll tell you, whoever decided that it was okay to put a million different Crash games on a million different mobile phones that are really hard to find, I will hunt you down and get the hooves out! Lumpies and germs, oh, this is the Panasonic GD67 from 2002. GD67? And inside this diddy little electric razor is a special bit of technology known as the Execution XN. Engine or XN, made by a company called Infusio. Infusio. This special engine has an exclusive Crash really? Bandicoot game on it, known among the community as Crash Bandicoot XN. Bandicoot XN. And let me tell you, getting a hold of this information, the correct phone, the software that's able to emulate it on a computer, and the game itself was unnecessarily difficult. But I did it anyway, because you know me. I'm the Caspanuka, big, big, bad, birthday, bashy, bingo boy, and there's no length I won't go to in order to find a video game that Crash Bandicoot is hiding in. After finding out about the game and the hardware that it was released on, I simply couldn't ignore it. But the digging I had to do to get inside it was deep and full of sand. <laughs> I managed to find an That's article from 2002 about the press release of the XN software and compatible mobile phones after a few minutes on Google, which was a great start, but it wasn't enough. I still couldn't find a way to play the game on the phone itself, let alone play it on a PC, so the hunt for an emulator for one specific dead mobile phone game engine began. I managed to find the emulator no problem, but the actual game files to play it on were another story. Enter Howard Forums, and a nearly 20-year-old article resurfaces from a load of pirates that wanted to download Infusio XN games onto their own mobile phones. I followed the breadcrumbs in the forum, one thing led to another, and I eventually ended up on a Chinese ROM website that inexplicably is the only place that has the ROM file for the Crash game buried in a million different discussion tabs that I can't even read because I don't live on the moon. But what is this? I can't download it without making an account for the site. Is it safe? Is it legit? Will I even get the right file? I don't know, but no problem is too big for Crash Bandy Boy to... Two, 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 two. And after all of that, I eventually Wasn't... managed to do it. Well? And was it worth it? Kind of. This here is the absolute closest to a Crash game that any of these old mobile phone games have ever come close to emulating, and it may just be my favourite for how close it nails this attempt. It's basically a mobile version of the GBA games, and you have all the controls you'd expect. You can run, jump, spin, belly flop, even crawl around and crouch jump to reach high areas. Uka Uka is also here, and he has oh, hi. a very offensive sense of humour. Mm. Now unfortunately, there is absolutely no sound anywhere in the game, and even after collecting all the crystals and hidden gems, I was only able to access four levels, but maybe these were glitches with the emulator and not the game itself. But regardless, I still enjoyed this game well enough to a point of beating every level 100%. Well done, Crash Bandicoot XN, for being the only game so far I could squint at and say, yeah, this looks sort of like Crash. But maybe he looks more like a wrinkled cheesy puff. Okay now, no more jokes, no more extensions to the end of this video. I swear to God, we are done. We have done every single Cash Banuka portable game I could get my hands on. Christ, I what mean. a pain. Sure, there is technically one more on mobile phones known as Crash Bandicoot Intuition, which is a sequel to Crash Boom Bang. No, thank you. Luckily you? for me though, that was a 2007 Japanese exclusive on something called the Docomo S. H904, which uses motion controls. So there was no way I was going to emulate it, let alone find an actual copy to play it. Which is a shame because I actually did manage to find myself a Japanese Docomo phone, just in case there was a chance I could play it. But it doesn't work. Oof. And this is a rare collector's item. That wasn't cheap.
And I can't do I shit with it. I played. And so, that's it. We're done. The end. Sorry, everybody. I know that took up a lot of your time, but I hope you enjoyed the ride as much as I did. I mean, I played some games I didn't even think existed. I enjoyed quite a lot of them. And I've got a better appreciation for Cash Banuka now. So, overall, I think this... Huh? Yellow. Hello? There's a mobile what? phone what? version of Crash Boom, Boom Bang! bang. Are you serious? Did we just say I give up? Crash Bandicoot is dead. Please subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell. Follow me on it. Or just on the mobile games. <laughs> Well, mobile phones, but you know what I mean. Boy, that was rough. All well, I gotta say, because I do not want to talk about this anymore, because we are done. Ugh, man, that was long. Man, I don't know why, but that felt longer than usual. I think it's just the bad quality these, like, mobile games. Like, God. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoyed. See ya.